one of the most celebrated Zuiko lenses that is universally admired is the 12 to 100 Pro. That is 24 to 200 in 35 mm film, a mid-range telephoto, f4 constant aperture over its eight and a half times zoom ratio. It is an optic that crosses the divide between all-purpose and specialist. Its capabilities feature techniques thought to be difficult a few years ago, and certainly unheard of, all made possible by several qualities exclusive to micro four-thirds, but dismissed by those who rely on the instant gratification of today's computerized cameras, and for whom the number of pixels are more important. In my own field of landscape and architecture, the 12 to 100 Pro lens has become my workhorse. In low light, I rely on its f4 constant aperture, consistent over its 8 times plus zoom range, and an image stabilizer that works with the camera's stabilizer, allowing handheld images at long shutter speeds unheard of a few years ago. I handhold everything, and my images are accepted for commercial publications. At Caterham, where I live, a prominent cedar tree, the town's logo, is illuminated at Christmas. I set the shutter speed to half a second and held my breath, a good trick, incidentally, widely dismissed. Because of different light sources, I left the white balance on auto, saved the raw, and adjusted in Lightroom. Note that I was able to leave the ISO at 200 to maintain commercial quality. Whilst in Durham, I bravely went to a full second and kept the ISO on 200. Using the lens at wide angle does reduce camera shake. Telephoto would be more difficult to hand hold, but the constant aperture of the lens avoids light loss that would happen with a variable aperture zoom. I spot meter near a highlight, allowing the image to go dark, then correct in post-production and white balance too. At the painted hall in Greenwich, I felt more comfortable at 400 ISO. Now the steps make an excellent lead-in, an invitation to enter, but in reality the low viewpoint and steps conceal people in the hall. Incidentally, I underexpose most of my shots by minus 0.3 EV to avoid accidental blown-out highlights that are difficult to correct and to beef up the colours a bit. One of the hidden benefits of Micro Four Thirds is extra depth of field. Micro Four Thirds extends the technique of photo technology. When I hand hold, the image stabilizers permit long shutter speeds at 200 ISO. At f4, I still have excellent depth of field, and of course, at 12 millimeters, essential for this composition, I can reduce camera shake, add a dash of experience, and that's it. But don't fall into the trap that you cannot isolate the background, making it unsharp, from the subject. I do wonder if those photographers who think that Micro Four Thirds can't do this know that different apertures and focal lengths of lenses will increase or reduce depth of field. At the telephoto end of the zoom, I have reduced depth of field to make the background unsharp, but I use f8 so that the whole shrub is sharp, by focusing on it, of course. The numbers might be different, but it works. Church interiors, a speciality of mine, is where I really benefit from Micro Four Thirds, with a system that has unrivaled image stabilization. It is all sharp at a twentieth of a second, at 200 ISO, helped with a wide angle end of the zoom to increase depth of field and prevent camera shake. I think that I could have risked a tenth of a second at f5.6, even a fifth at f8, to increase depth of field, but 
Isn't it amazing how F4 still provides a sharp image overall from the font to the organ? But don't forget the hyperfocal distance. What's that, I hear you say? Well, that is to focus a third of the way into the image and not on the background. If you did that, then the font will become unsharp. Hand-holding increases mobility. Occasionally, I have to work quickly because I am not the only person in a church. You may have to wait to get the desired shot, but it won't be long before somebody else stands in front of you and with a camera. Are they trying to tell me something? Much of this also applies to stately homes. The National Trust do not allow tripods, and because of the huge variation of light source and quality, I leave the white balance on auto and metering on program. Now, program is not auto, a common mistake, incidentally. You can still add your own personal settings. In low light, it will default to the largest aperture, in this case, f4. At Shuttleworth Collection in Bedfordshire, I handheld in the museum. But yet again, at f4, micro four thirds has given the depth of field that this shot demands. One of the most challenging places I recently photographed was the remains of a Roman amphitheatre underneath the Guildhall in London. It is free to enter. Very little remains, but what is missing has been recreated by projection, and there are sounds. It was difficult to photograph, and I managed to choose a quiet moment. Of course, one of the biggest benefits between digital technology and film is that you can check the shots before leaving, and I don't mind omitting to doing just that.